Hi, I'm Lila and welcome to the Hello Geese Quilt Along week one. This week we're going to be talking about um, choosing the size of your quilt, choosing what fabrics you're going to use, and getting them cut out. Um, so let's get started. Um, I just wanted to, so this is the pattern. I printed it all out and um, honestly, when I made the cover for the pattern, it was really, it was that week where it was super cold and depressing and awful and I couldn't like somehow design a pattern when it was awful and then it got sunny and I could design the pattern cover better. So I have a new and improved pattern cover. It's down in the description. You can bring it blame seasonal depression on the old ugly one so if you want a <laughs> new prettier cover I'll hook you up um, so here's the pattern printed it out in black and white because my color printer doesn't work very well and we've got our fabric requirements you can choose to make a crib throw or large throw it's almost a twin not quite sized quilt and you can choose to make it scrappy. Scrappy would mean um, each of the flying geese is a different fabric. Or, and with this, the scrappy option, um, we use the stitch and flip method that I'll be going over next week. I'll walk you through it, but basically it's you. So you cut out a rectangle of fabric, you have a square of fabric and put it on one side, you sew it, flip it, and it makes a flying case. Um, there's also the ombre version and or all of your salt flying geese that are in each row in one type of fabric. And that uses the no waste or four in one method and um, where you have a big piece of fabric that you put other squares on and it magically turns into four flying geese. We'll go over that next week too in detail not today so there's fa the fabric requirements for each of those so choose what you're gonna do um, let me show you what I chose out I decided to um, base my quilt around this I'm gonna have this be my background fabric I think it's a really pretty print and not usually colors that I would choose but they look really great together. So I pulled the fabrics from there. I've got an orange and a mustard. There's just a little bit of mustard in there. And then this navy, kind of a, a lighter navy, and this fuchsia, this beautiful purple. So these are the ones I'm gonna be making a crib size quilt. I thought about doing the twin and then I like reevaluated my life and decided to, to, to aim low and if I decide that I'm like on a roll I'll make a bunch of other rows and make a twin but start small. Um, so do what works best for you during this time. Um, so these are my four fabrics. Um, if you're making the throw you'd need more. Um, so, and I'm going to be using the ombre four in one method. If you're going to be using the scrappy method, you could use that. If you just like doing the stitch and flip, like you want, you want all of your geese to be in one fabric, but you want to use the stitch and flip method. That's fine too. Just cut out all of your flying geese from one half yard cut of fabric. So, um, I was gonna show you something and I forget. So, oh, when I'm do, if you're gonna do it totally scrappy and have a different fabric for each flying geese, kind of like this one, let me pull this over here. So each of these flying geese is a different fabric. For this one, I started dark at the bottom and chose lighter color fabrics at the top you can do that or you can just have it be all basically one color or have you can have it do whatever you want do whatever you want so these are my scraps if I was gonna do it scrappy um, 
I always think it's kind of fun to see what people do with their scraps, so I'm just going to show you. So, this is where usually this tub isn't so full and they're all organized by color, but this tub, little tub is where I keep my smaller than a fat quarter, but not super small. I can still get some stuff out of them. <coughs> so this is where I'd start, and I would start with um, by dividing them up by color. So let's say we'll just grab some, some blues here nice selection of blues for and I'll have say I'm having one column of flying geese and blues and then I just look at them and decide I think the biggest size is ten and a half by five and a half see if I could get a ten and a half by five and a half cut out of this probably it looks pretty good um, give them an iron a little press if you need and then just cut it out so I don't know how much you guys want to see can you even see that let me do this this is this this whole video thing is new to me so we're just gonna learn together you're gonna be fine with it it's gonna be fine so if I was to do this I would and cut out a 10 and a half inch piece. I just put my ruler on top of my piece of fabric. I trim up one side since it's supposed to be about five and a half by ten and a half. I go up to about six inches and to about eleven inches. Move away these little stringy guys. And then move this. I mean, my one inch mark is right here. Let's see. Move it right here. Make sure this line is on five and a half. This line is on ten and a half. You can fast forward this if you don't need this. That's fine. And then just cut top and bottom. And I've got a little piece, my little five, first five and a half by ten and a half inch piece. And then just keep doing that until you have all your scrappy bits. You're going to cut all of the, um, has all of the colorways, all the sizes you're going to need and how many of them here. And then it'll say how you will want to cut this many things from each color. So for each column that's a different color, you'll cut that. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's what I do. And then this basket is where I keep all of my little pieces. So once I got to my smaller pieces, I'd start rummaging through here so I'm not cutting like a one and a half by two and a half inch piece from like a big piece like this. I'd use this for my five and a half by ten and a half. Okie doke. So, scrappy, here we go. And if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll pop back in here to answer them. Scrappy, great. Ombre, this gets a little more complicated, not too bad. Um, to get the ombre effect where you go from dark to light, out of just one piece of fabric, you will need to have an ombre effect fabric. Here's, I cut this one up, but we can kind of see. So this fabric starts dark on one side and then goes, gets lighter gradually till the very middle is light. So to get the ombre effect, we're gonna want to cut our big pieces out of the side and our small pieces out of the middle. And I have in the cutting instructions, there's a guide on how to do that, where to put your blocks to get that effect. Now I, for my, um, for mine, I'm using the ombre method, the um, no waste method to make the flying geese. 
but since I'm just using uh, just a print that doesn't change, I don't have to worry about the placement of those squares when I'm cutting them up. So I can use, I can squish all those squares together and just use the best use of my fabric. For example, hopefully you guys will be able to see here. We've got a large square and then this small, next size smaller square is kind of scooted up so you get the ombre thing. I can just slide that over there, get that, um, cut it out right of, on that corner and then scoot all these down. So I'm using the bet, making the best use of my fabric. So I'd go ahead and cut all of these pieces from each of my different fabrics because I'm doing the crib. I need four different colors. The um, throw is five and the um, large throw is eight. So I will just use the same method that I just kind of walked you through. You're just going to, let's see, let's see what size I need. Need nine and a quarter. So I'm gonna go put my ruler here. The one is up. There we go. It's a little better there. Okay, I've got my one inch mark up here. And down here, I'm gonna make sure this is at least nine and a quarter. I'm gonna go to about nine and a half. And then go up one side. Move that out of the way. Go here. Move that. Flip this over so these are now your straight cut lines and these are the kind of edges that maybe aren't so straight cut. And then you're going to line your ruler up on the finished size that you need. In this case, it's nine and a quarter. And then I'll trim off these uneven edges here. And throw those away. And you'll just do that for all of your pieces. And then I'll just try to use the best, make the best use of my fabric. So I'll cut the next size piece out of here and then probably cut the next two kind of out here. But I won't make you sit through all of that because we're already, we're already up to 13 minutes. So let's talk about background. Oh, actually, before we talk about any of that, let's talk about, I got some requests to make, um, to have there be the option to make the very smallest flying geese out of um, to make the foundation paper piece that foundation paper piecing is going to is actually probably the best method um, it's gonna make sure that your points are tight and even and everything comes out perfectly so I am linking in this will be in the YouTube down in the down in the description in the email there'll be a link in the email you can find it on my blog it'll be everywhere so I've made up some um, foundations for the very smallest flying geese and for the second to smallest sized flying geese. If you want to foundation paper piece them, get that file, print it out. I'm just gonna tell you what pieces not to cut because you're going to need, for foundation paper piecing, if you're not familiar with it, you need pieces that are a little bit bigger and then you trim it all down and it works out perfectly. Um, so this is what not to cut, and then here's what you're gonna replace it with. Um, so this is a really great option. Here's the bigger ones, so we'll just go like that. Um, and they're, they're sewn together, already kind of pre-sewn in a line like we're going to want them, so this is a great option. The links will be on my blog in the description and everywhere. So you can get that if you want. Just remember to not cut these and to cut these instead. So I would, what I'd do is I'd pull out 
the cutting instructions. Look on here, see what it says not to cut, exit out so you don't make a mistake, and then um, jot on, on here, jot on here what this says to cut. Okay, if that's what you want to do. You have options. Kind of way too many options with this pup pattern, but that's okay, we're just going with it. So, let's see. Next, we need to cut out our background. I'm not gonna make you watch me cut out all of my fabric, but with the background, what I want to point out is just that the method that I'm having you use is basically to cut strips and then to subcut those strips into all the different squares and rectangles you'll need. Um, there's a couple, there are a couple strips that you might only, like you'll cut the whole strip and then there might only be like one or two squares you use out of it. So, but it was the easiest way to write it all. So if you're really, get really twitchy about wasting fabric, you might wanna cut one less strip, see how it works out, and then cut those extra pieces from scrap if you need, or if you're like, oh, I need like, I still need like five or six more pieces, I better cut that extra strip, you can do that. Um, but I just, just follow the instructions, it's fine. You might just have a few extra scraps. Um, so, here we go, let me, turn the camera a little bit for you. I've got my fabric. I've got selvage up on this side. I've got my fold here and I've got my long ruler here. Um, just going to look at my pattern. It says I need four one and a half inch by width of fabric, W-O-F means width of fabric, that means from selvage to selvage, and then I'm going to subcut those into 16 and a half inch rectangles. So we'll just do that. I'll just show you how to do this. First, you're going to line up your one inch line along the fold of your fabric down here and that'll keep everything square so you don't end up with a bend in your strip. So and then just make sure that it covers the fabric here. And then I like to kind of put some pressure on, just work my way down the side. If you find that your ruler slips a little bit, you can um, kind of move your hand with it. All right, so I'm, what does it say? One and a half, that's pretty darn narrow. You can cut these in any order you like. If you wanna cut out the big ones first, you can do that. So, one and a half, it's on the one inch line down here. Everything's even my hand pressure start working it if you find it slips you can kind of cut a little bit pause and then put a little more pressure up higher on the ruler keep cutting now I would cut all of the strips that it said to cut and then but you don't have to watch that and then I'll take these strips and subcut them subcutting them means just taking the strip and cutting it into smaller it pieces. In this case, they are 16 and a half inch pieces. So, where am I? So, I'm going to see if I can do this so you guys can see. I'm going to have my one of the lines on my ruler go down the side of the fabric. So I make sure it's square and I'm just gonna trim off my selvages, throw those away. And then I'm going to, I have the one inch line down here. Let's see here. One inch line down here, 
cutting something 16 and a half inches. So I go to 16 and a half up here and then just trim it. Boom, so I've got two. I only have, and then I'll just keep cutting till it is. So there's more. Um, some of the some of the instructions, especially for the scrappy version, will have you cut a bunch of strips and then cut a bunch of sizes from that strip. So let's imagine for a second that it said to cut a 16 and a half inch strip, but it also said I need some one and a half inch strips. I can use these little leftovers that aren't, this isn't enough to get another 16 and a half inch strip out of, but I could use, but if hypothetically this I mean the pattern does not call for this but if it did I could actually in the actually in the scrappy version it does so you need a bunch of these so I would use my little if this was the scrappy version I would use the little extras and cut a bunch of little one and a half inch squares and then I can un even unfold this guy and get one extra one and a half inch square out of there. Now as you go through the pattern and are cutting all of these pieces, some of them are quite similar in size. We've got um, some like four and a half inch pieces and then some four and seven eighth inch pieces and it's just can get confusing. So what I would do, what I recommend is grabbing some scratch paper and a pen and writing down what size it is. This is kind of silly because my scratch paper is bigger than my pieces, but you can take your scratch paper and pin it onto the pieces, and then when you're coming back, you won't be like, what size are these? Are these one and seven eighths inch? I don't know, I'll have to measure it. I'm getting stressed. No stress, just fun. Um, all right, so you're just gonna work your way through the pattern and cut everything out. If, um, if you don't wanna cut everything out this week, that's fine, I usually, I have commitment issues with quilts. <laughs> so I like to, you know, make a block before I commit to cutting out the whole quilt. So if you're like that, that's fine. You can go ahead and do that. Just pick your fabric, get some of it cut. Um, and if you want to be entered, we're gonna have a giveaway this week. Um, if you want to be entered to win a $25 gift card from Mosh Modern, she has great modern fabrics. She has Heather Ross, Juicy Juice, um, the, I'm just blanking. <laughs> she has Tula Pink. She has like everything that's bright and fun and modern is there. So you'll find something that you will like. So if you want to be entered to win that, all you have to do is post a picture of your fabric. Um, you know, you can cut some of it if you want to, but definitely your fabric. Um, if you're, and then get some of it cut and you can post it on Instagram with the hashtag hello geese quilt along. And I'll look for your pictures and pick someone randomly, randomly, um, and let you know. So let's see, let me make sure I've gone over everything. I think so. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments, either on Instagram or on Facebook, not Facebook, on um, YouTube. And maybe I should post this on Facebook. I don't know. So much tech to learn, you guys. So, thanks for sticking with me. And um, I think that's it. Thank you so much. I will see you next week. And next week, I will walk you through how to fly, how to sew the flying geese. We'll be making the large flying geese. Um, that'll be the ones that end up five and a half inches by 10 and a half inches unfinished and the ones that are 
four and a half inches by eight and a half inches. That will be what we will start next Friday. Um, so I'll have a video out for that and we'll go over in, in detail how to piece flying geese. So if you're new to that, you'll I've got you covered and you'll be a pro by the end of this quilt. So thank you so much. And I um, can't wait to see your pictures. Can't wait to see all the stuff you're making. And thank you so much. Till next week. Bye.